Hello and welcome to yet another debunking video by Pale Blue Thoughts. Today I am going to expose yet another pseudoscience related to health. Modern health quacks or alternate medicine practitioners are super salesmen. They play on people's fear. They cater to people's hope. And once they have got you in their control, they will keep you coming back for more and more and more. Seldom do their victims realize how often or how skillfully they are cheated. Most people think that quackery is easy to spot. Often it is not. The promoters wear the cloak of science. They use scientific terms and quote scientific references. To one and all, they promise better health and longer life, but at the end provide them with nothing and they end up cleaning up their pockets. Today we will look at another pseudoscientific quackery which goes by the name Reiki. Welcome to Pale Blue Thoughts, the channel which debunks pseudoscience and promotes scientific temper. Reiki is a form of energy healing that centers on the manipulation of Qi, the Japanese version of the Chinese life force called Qi. Rei means universal in Japanese and Ki means spirit or life energy or life force. So Reiki literally translates to universal life force. Reiki was popularized by a Japanese person named Mikao Usui during the early 20th century. After fasting and meditating for several weeks, he began hallucinating and hearing voices giving him the keys to healing. One of his students, Chujiro Hayashi, further developed the healing practices. An American named Hawaii Takata learned Reiki from Hayashi in Japan and introduced it to Western cultures in the late 1930s. Like its counterparts in traditional Chinese medicine or Ayurveda or homeopathy, the practitioners of Reiki believe that health and disease are a matter of the life force being disrupted. Belief in a life force known as vitalism was common in the West until the 19th century. Since then, the concept of life force has been dumped in the rubbish heap of discarded scientific notions. However, the belief in vitalism is still strong in China as Qi, in India where the life force is called Prana, in Africa as Animism and in Japan as Qi. Energy healing practitioners believe that the universe is full of some sort of vital energy that cannot be detected by any scientific instruments but which can be felt and controlled often by special people who learn the tricks of the trade. In a traditional Reiki session, the client lies down or sits on the floor. The practitioner's hands are placed lightly on or just above the client's body, palms down, using a series of 12 to 15 positions. Each position is held for about 2 to 5 minutes or until the practitioner feels that the flow of energy has slowed or stopped. The energy flow is said to be experienced as sensations such as heat or the tingling in the hands. Typically, the practitioner delivers at least four sessions of 30 to 60 minutes each. The techniques include centering, clearing, beaming, extracting harmful energies, infusing and smoothing and raking the aura, all of which are claimed to influence the imaginary energy that Reiki advocates postulate. In reality, these are just scientific sounding words inserted to make it scientific when it is not. Reiki can also be self-administered and the really unbelievable claim is that it can be administered to others at distant locations. That is, that they can channel the energy from their hands to someone sitting miles away. This should by itself prove that this is a fake form of treatment. Reiki healers differ from acupuncturists in that they do not try to unblock a person's key but they try to channel the key of the universe so that the client or patient heals. Reiki practitioners claim to facilitate healing by strengthening or balancing the key. The channeling is done with the hands and no physical massaging is necessary since key flows through the body of the healer into the patient. The Reiki master claims to be able to draw upon the energy of the universe and to increase his or her own energy while performing a healing. Depending on the training and beliefs of the healer, Reiki is used to treat a wide array of ailments. Larry Arnold and Sandra Nevins claim in the Reiki handbook that Reiki is useful for treating brain damage, cancer, diabetes and venereal diseases. Many Reiki healers are more modest 
and treat lesser problems such as fatigue or muscle soreness. And the best part is that if you do not believe in Reiki, it won't work for you. At least that is what Reiki masters say. If the healing fails and it will inevitably fail for such things as cancer, it is because the patient is resisting the healing energy. Non-belief is one of the great blocks to healing energy. If it works by chance, then the credit is taken by the master. If it fails, they can escape by saying you aren't a believer and you resisted the energy. Cool scam, isn't it? Just like a cat, it always lands on four legs, no matter what the outcome is. No special background or credentials are needed to receive a training in Reiki. To become a practitioner, one must receive an initiation or what they call as an attunement from a Reiki master. This ceremony makes one attuned to the universal life energy and enables one to become a conduit or a channel for the key. They are said to be three to four different levels of attunement. At the higher levels, one can allegedly channel Reiki energy and cause healings at a distance without physical contact. Training for the lower levels typically happens in just one or two days. Training to become a master is said to take years. One must learn which symbols to use, when to call up the universal life force, how to heal an emotional or spiritual illness and most curiously how to heal someone who isn't even present. The techniques taught can vary greatly among Reiki schools and teachers. Most importantly, there are no licensing or professional standards existing for the practice and training of Reiki. So does Reiki work? Yes. Reiki works as well as any other placebo medicine. It works primarily by the power of suggestion and classical conditioning, both of which can bring about physiological changes in the believer or on someone who knows little about how placebos work. Reiki, however, will have no effect on someone who thinks that Reiki ritual is a superstitious scam. Once again, by applying the principle of Occam's razor, we find no need for key to explain how Reiki works. So has any studies been done to prove the authenticity of this method of treatment? Of course, yes. And the properly done, unmanipulated studies have all drawn a big zero favoring this technique. The most comprehensive review of Reiki research was done by Edzard Ernst at the University of Exeter. They studied 205 potentially relevant studies and 9 randomized control studies. After surveying all these studies conducted on Reiki, they concluded that most were poorly designed and the evidence was insufficient to suggest that Reiki is an effective treatment for any condition. There are many more studies that have concluded the same and I will post a list of them below in the description for you to read if you wish. In 2013, researchers at the Scripps Institute in San Diego used a special device to measure the electromagnetic fields from the hands and heart of three Reiki masters when they were 1. not practicing Reiki, 2. when they were transmitting Reiki to a distant person and 3. when they were transmitting the energy to a person in the room. Similar measurements were made on four volunteers before and after they received a Reiki training. The device recorded no radiation or energy attributable to Reiki. So how does Reiki survive if it is not effective? Just the same way as homeopathy, Ayurveda and faith healing survives without an iota of scientific evidence. They are all faith-based healing systems which work on various reasons like placebo. And they survive on a handful of anecdotal evidences like it worked for me or it helped my uncle's pain and stress go away and so on. One major drawback of individual success stories is that they don't indicate how many failures might occur for each success. Most often, in the case of critical illnesses, people who went for such nonsense treatment may not live to tell their tale. The alternative movement is part of a general societal trend towards rejection of science as a method of determining truths. Under the rules of science, people who make the claims bear the burden of proof. It is their responsibility to conduct suitable studies and report them in sufficient detail to allow others to evaluate it and confirm their effectiveness. But they often never do that or come up with cooked up faulty studies as we have seen with Reiki here. Healing methods such as homeopathy and Reiki are not just called pseudoscience because there is no good clinical evidence for their effectiveness, but their theory itself violates fundamental physical laws. 
things don't get potentized when diluted and there are no energy fields that we can generate from within our bodies that can be used to channel someone else's energy. When someone feels better after having used a product or procedure, it is natural to give credit to that. That is why people often comment that what is your problem if it worked for me? However, the reason why this thought is foolish is because most ailments resolve by themselves and you are paying for it unnecessarily. Even serious conditions can have sufficient day-to-day -day variation that help such useless healing systems to gain large followers. In addition, taking actions such as visiting a doctor or a practitioner often produces a temporary relief of symptoms due to the placebo effect. This effect is a beneficial change in a person's condition that occurs in response to a treatment but is not due to the physical aspects of the treatment. The placebo effect may be enhanced by such factors such as faith, sympathetic attention, sensational claims, testimonials and the use of scientific looking charts, devices and terminology. People who are not aware of these facts tend to give undeserved credit to alternative methods. I refer you to this video that I have done to learn more about the placebo effect. Whenever we analyze the medical system or any form of treatment, the first question we should ask is whether it is safe. But what is the first question that we always ask? Is it effective? And that is the wrong way of thinking. So is Reiki or any other energy healing dangerous? The practices are not inherently dangerous, but they could be deadly to patients who try to treat something like diabetes or cancer by just having someone wave their hands in the air over parts of the body. Reiki has no substantiated health value and lacks a scientifically plausible rationale. People with a scientific temper should stay clear of it and should also encourage others from such pseudoscientific practices. One way you can do that is by sharing this video with your friends and family member groups and educating the people. When the buying stops, the killing would too. I shall be back soon with yet another pseudoscience busting video or some fresh scientific content. Until then, it's bye bye from Pale Blue Thoughts.